Hey guys, what's going on? Oh, fuck. Alright, there you go. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Megan here. Fuck, man. This shit is all out of... Alright, good. This is probably the most exciting find I ever stumbled across, guys. Probably the, the most exciting. This video is fucking gonna be crazy. Now, you guys know, right? Sherlock Swole. I love doing research. I just love it. I love learning. I love knowledge. I love. I, I get bored when I'm doing the same thing over and over again, right? So I'm always trying different shit. Even if I find something that works, right? I still try to experiment the next thing I, didn't, I never tried, just to see if it's better than the previous one. I always want to see if the grass is greener. And then this way, if the grass is not greener, I come back to what works, right? So if you're familiar with my channel, you know I was I was a big big proponent, and I still am, of overtraining for gains, right? I made that video like a year ago when I, it was called uh, How Overtraining Can Help You Build Big Brawly Side Monster, something like that. And I had a picture of like Johnny Jackson on it. And this video has actually like a lot of, there's a lot of people watch that video. And that's when I, I was explaining how I was not referring to overtraining as like, you know, uh, I'm not going to eat calories, I'm not going to eat my protein or do, or do whatever and just, you know, I was referring to overtraining that in quotes, high volume training, you know, training the same muscle either every day or uh, twice a day or fucking doing super high volume whatever I was, I was calling that kind of overtraining overtraining and I was saying how it could be good and beneficial in the long run right and back then I told you guys that I didn't know the science behind it but I was pretty sure that eventually it was going to be found right and I always tell people that I love combining science and bro science because science are the guys who stay in the lab and experiment and actually see what's happening between the lines right actually see what's happening inside the uh Whatever, whatever it is they're studying, but the bro science guys are actually the ones doing the damn thing, right? They're actually the ones in the gym. So yes, they might not be right all of the fucking times. We might not be right all the time when we come up with crazy theories, but we, we close, right? We, 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 we usually close. I mean, a lot of stuff that science is finding out now, all know than all the guys were doing it years ago, right? They had no clue how it was happening, and that's how bro science came out. They would just say, well, if you jump three times and spin and hit your head on the side, you grow a big bass. They, they'll just make up something, but that had, you know, it was based on experience. So that's what I, I look at both sides because science is always behind bro science. You get what I mean? Like a bro scientist will say this, then science will say, okay, let me go experiment. And then science will either say, okay, this is true or it's not true. So both ways, you gotta look at both sides. And that's how I base all my research on. But that overtraining thing, that's the only thing that I didn't really have science behind, right? But I told you guys, if you walk back to one of the videos I made after that, I said, I know there's no science to back it up, but I guarantee you guys it works and very soon science will come out, you know, we'll finally explain it. And it was the principle of if you pick a muscle, right, it doesn't have to be one, but if you pick one muscle and you train it every day, you overtrain it for like three to four weeks or a month, maximum a month. I always tell people never go more than a month. And you give it some, some rest after that. When you go back in the gym and you train it with normal, you know, 10 or 12 reps, normal bodybuilding parameter stuff, it will blow up, right? And I got that idea by looking at it, so many people from Africa to Europe to everywhere I've been who were able to build great physiques by accident you know like I, I talked about the farmers in Africa that were not the farmers the masons that would do wheelbarrow work all fucking day and had these great traps and they, they didn't even know what the traps muscle was and they were just going to work right and these guys who were using uh who were selling charcoal we used to call it beat up it's funny name in Africa. They would ride the bikes up and down the hills all day selling charcoal, and they had these huge quads with these skinny upper bodies, right? Because they they were using their quads under tension for a long time. And I talked about so many examples, right? Watch that video, and I was like, man, why is it that when somebody uses a muscle every day, that muscle just seems to grow like crazy, whether they're still training or not, right? And what's even crazier is if you used to overtrain the muscle in your teenage years and uh, in your you know 20s whatever and you begin bodybuilding the muscle you used to overtrain before by accident or purposely whatever grows like fucking crazy right so i was like you know what everything is pointing towards that thing it's not just genetics i hate people that just see somebody with a great body part and say it's just genetics sometimes it is sometimes it's not kind of like the whole match story you guys saw the, the, the video on how match tries to grow up when marco first saw my he was all oh, genetic genetics and I saw man, I was like, you know what? It looks like genetics, but let's do some research. Then I found out that formal walks and things like that were great ways to breathe to build your traps. And I asked Matt one day, I said, hey, dude, Matt, did you do anything similar to formal walks when you were like uh, young? And he goes, no, I can't think of anything. And then he messaged me later on. He goes, oh, I used to do wheelbarrow. I used to carry wheelbarrows. Remember the African story to do guys with the wheelbarrows? He said, I used to carry wheelbarrows back and forth in my father's yard when I was growing up, and every time I finished it, my trust was so, you know, I, I used to hate doing it, and because I was lazy, I used to just 
pile as much weight as I could on it and just try to, you know, drag with it. And when he started bodybuilding, guess what's the muscle that grew the fastest on Matt? His traps, you know? So I looked at, I mean, guys, I put out a piece of paper and wrote down so many of these fucking stories. It's, the list is endless. I could post it on, on the description if you guys want. Crazy stories, you know? And eventually I got to the conclusion that, dude, if you, if you train a muscle every day, even me, when I first started bodybuilding, I used to go to the gym and just do biceps every fucking day, right? I had, like, I had no peak, no bicep peak, nothing at all, right? I used to do biceps every fucking day, because I didn't know anything, I didn't know any better. And um, when, I, when I started eating, and because back then I didn't know about nutrition, when I started eating my protein and whatever, doing all that stuff, the first body part that grew, even when I stopped training every day, was my biceps. And I was like, what the fuck? People thought, oh, good genetics. I was like, no, I used to train this shit every fucking day. Same thing with my chest. I wanted my chest to grow, and I had met a guy in my swimming class um, in high school, and he told me uh, that he used to do 50 push-ups a day. So I was like, you know what, bro, science, let, me, let me try doing it. So I used to... Every morning, the moment I woke up, I would do 100 push-ups. I started with 10. I couldn't even do 10. Then over time, I built it up to 20, 30, 50. Then I was like, you know what? Might as well do 100. I was able to do 100 push-ups a day. And my chest didn't really grow big, right? Because like I said, by the time, I didn't know about protein. I was just fucking training. And when I started bodybuilding, guess what's the body part that grew on me getting the fastest? My chest. Even though I was training like once a week now. So I realized, man, there's something about that everyday training thing. And I told you guys, you want to make a muscle grow, I don't know the science behind it, but just hit it every day for like a month, take a break from it, and then after that, when you go back to the gym, train it normally, like every other body part, and it will grow. And I got messages and pictures. I can't put a lot of the pictures, because I mean, the people wanted their privacy, but I tried to cut the head and show you people that built, in, in weeks, guys, like four to six weeks, came back, and they're like, oh my God, I, I could never get this body part to grow, and now it's huge, and I was saying before and after pictures, and I was like, God damn, this thing works. So I went and I asked my boss at work, I asked my supervisor because she does biochemistry and things like that. No one could give me an answer until I stumbled upon this uh, article one day. It was based on a study. Watch this, guys. It's amazing. Now, you guys, I like studying, I like studying biochemistry even though it's not part of my major. just because I love the human body. I like the way the body works. And like I said, science finally found out for you science motherfuckers that refuse to do anything until science agrees. Well, now you behind because science just found out why this fucking crazy strategy worked. Oh, and then later on, I found out that the uh, the C.T. Fletcher guy, because he, I think I did that video like a year and a half ago, and one of my subscribers messaged me and said, dude, this guy called C.T. Fletcher, he has huge arms. He said he used to train it every day. So I added him to my list, and pfft. Anyway, um, this is a muscle set, right? I hope this video does not stop on me, you guys. You know what? Let me pause it and press play again. All right, because it stops by itself. Let's say this is a muscle cell, right? Obviously, it really looks, you know, something like that. But let's just pretend it's a muscle cell, right? A muscle cell has a nucleus, right? Now, the, the average cell has one nucleus. Muscle cells are the only cells in the human body that can, that can have more than one nucleus, right? Nuclei, plural for nucleus. So that could have a whole bunch of these motherfuckers, right? Now, the size of a... How much a muscle can actually grow depends on how much nucleus it has. I mean, I mean, it makes sense. The nucleus is where the DNA is. That's where protein synthesis, uh, you know, really begins. That's where testosterone binds to the androgen receptors that goes in the nucleus. The, the nucleus is everything. It's like the brain of the cell, right? It, it dictates everything, right? And around the cell, you also have mitochondria and all these things that produce energy and ATP. Make a long story short, the more nuclei you, a cell as muscle cell has, the faster it can grow, right? So if this cell here has three nuclei, this one has two, you know, you do the math, this is scientific proven, this one is going to grow faster than this one, it has more, um, more brains if you want to call it. If this cell has fucking a shitload of nuclei, then if all three of these guys, three different guys, train using the same intensity, same everything, same nutrition, same genetics, this guy's going to grow a lot faster because he has more nuclei. Once again, that is proven. Now, the question arises. How do you increase the cell's nuclear, right? Because obviously, you, you, you know, you want to get bigger. Based on this, you want to increase the cell's nuclear. How do you do that? Well, where does that nucleus come from? The actual nucleus comes from something called satellite cells. I made a video about that. I think I did. I mentioned it in a lot of videos. Satellite cells are stem cells that are like, say this is the muscle cell, right? With this one occur. They're stem cells, meaning their genes are not activated yet, right? They're just sleeping. Call it that. They're sleeping around a, a cell. And when you work out, let's say you, you know, you damage your bicep, you work out, you, you make like little injuries here, micro tears in the muscle. These satellite cells proliferate, meaning they multiply, and they go to the place where the energy, you know, the injury has been done, and they're fused, they form myoblasts, and they you know, they kind of fuse to the damage site, and they make the, the muscle bigger. That's how your muscle, a lot of people don't know, that's how your muscle fucking grow, right? You damage the muscle cell, 
right here, boom, bicep curl. Satellite cells, go there, fusion, fuse, patch it up, the muscle cell looks bigger. You repeat that over and over again, boom, you're a sore motherfucker, right? Another thing, testosterone increases the activity of satellite cells. Myostatin decreases the activity of satellite cells. That's why when you lower myostatin or when you myostatin deficient, you grow huge than a motherfucker. Watch my video on myostatin. So then the question is, how do you increase nucleus? One thing is obviously testosterone, steroids, right? When you take steroids, your nucleus increase like a motherfucker, right? The satellite cells go, go, make the muscle bigger, even if there's no damage. Another thing that scientists found out is they took, uh, they realized if one muscle of the human body works harder than the other one, so let's say I break your arm and I make this arm do all the work, or I break your right leg and I make your left leg do all the work, right? Your left leg, after a period of time, is going to have more nuclei than the right leg because it's doing more work. And they figured out what, what's the key, what is the secret? They realized it is volume, overtraining. When you overwork a muscle, they tested it on humans and on rats, because on rats you could actually break the motherfucker's legs, right? She's fucking sadistic, but hey, that's a lot of where medicine comes from. They took a rat to prove that it worked on humans and rats. They took a rat and they, 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 I think they broke one of his legs to make the other leg work harder. And over time, the nuclei in the, other, in the leg that was working harder grew. So what point am I trying to make? How do you increase your nucleus? You don't want to break the, your other leg. You don't want to take steroids. Uh, you want to do high volume training. They find out that when you do high volume training or over training, as most people call it, like if you train the same muscle every day, really, really hard, the cells increase. So what? Jericado? Jericado? No. The cells increase. The satellite cells go, give them, and they donate their nucleus, right? So they go. And as opposed to you having three, now you probably have like four, or five, or six, whatever. Right? So, okay. So, okay, so taxes came in, guys. So they they go to the site, and now nothing about the muscle doesn't grow by the way. The only thing that happens is the nuclei increases. So your potential to grow increases, but the muscle itself doesn't really grow like crazy. That's why I told people I said, look, overtrain that muscle for a while. Take a break and they'll go, go training normally and then it will, it will grow. I didn't know why, but now we know why. Because what happens is, once you do that high volume of training shit for like three weeks to four weeks a month, you're increasing the size of the nuclei. But the muscle itself is not really growing, right? You're just increasing that, you're increasing the mitochondria, ATP, product, all, all that stuff. But the muscle itself is not growing. It's really sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, right? And I made a video about that. But then after that, when you go back to training normally, heavy, high intensity, whatever, now the muscle grows way faster than all your other muscles because that muscle just got an increase in brains, in nuclei. So, once again, if you want to put the studies in the description uh, to all the, you know, all the studies, all the links, whatever, there's so many of them. Just type nuclei, uh, biogenesis, all these things, satellite cell activation, all these things. So what do you get? What's the conclusion? What do you get out of this video? The reason why overtraining works for a certain period of time, because mind you, if you're doing that overtraining shit for like your whole life, you're just increasing nuclei until you reach your genetic potential, the muscle cells not really gonna grow. It's when you stop doing that shit after you got your nuclei and begin to live heavy that the muscle really expands and grows way faster. That's why traps, um, mass traps blew up. That's why, oh, and they also find out soccer players, people that play soccer, people that, that sprint, people that do high volume, high intensity, and high um, endurance, strength endurance stuff, when they start lifting weights, that's the reason why they grow so, so, you know, so much faster because sprinting and cycling and playing soccer and all these things increase the nuclei inside the muscle, but not the muscle itself. So when they finally start lifting weights and working out, they grow a lot faster. That's, that's the reason why me and Hans would talk about it when we discovered, that's the reason why Hans blew up so fast after a whole year of playing soccer and not training. Not only his mTOR had, you know, got a chance to reset, but he has so much condensed nuclei in the muscles and he started lifting, you got started progress. And there's so many stories. Uh, that's the reason why I mentioned Matt Straps. Uh, I mentioned my uncle when he used to do his back every fucking day without even knowing it. And now he does it back just once a week and it's his most dominant body part. Uh, and he tried the same thing with legs. Same thing happened. Uh, I tried the same thing with triceps at one point. At one point I had these huge triceps because I did the same thing. I'm gonna go back to doing it. I used to do really, really high reps, high volume uh, on my triceps. And then I stopped, and I went back to doing normal once a week training, and blew up. So I want to go back to that. So the, the lesson is this, guys. You want the muscle to grow. Same thing I told you earlier, guys. Overtrain it for about two to four weeks, right? No more than that. After that, take a week break to reset everything. Reset your until reset everything, and then go back and train it normally, like, you know, whether once or twice a week, back to your original routine, and you'd be amazed at the gains. 
finally, I said it last year when it wasn't proven. Now I'm saying it this year when it's finally proven. If you got any questions, put it in the comment section. I'm gonna make a part two to this where I go into more and more details. But four weeks, I say three to four weeks. I say a month. Like I said in the other video, one month of high volume overtraining, whatever you want to call it. Just make sure you eat a lot of protein, guys. And um, obviously sleep. And then followed by another month or, or more of um, typical 10 to 12 heavy lifting. All right, hope this video helps. And stay tuned for more on the same topic. So I have, a, you know, a gut. But this is me at 200 pounds, right? Took this this week. That fat ass picture was me at 185. To show you guys that yes, in un in, in in under six months, I was able to put on 15 pounds when I went back to straight car back loading. And look at this. How do you put on 15 pounds and look leaner than when you were at 185?